Welcome to Assessment of the Abdomen for School Nurses, Part 2. My name is Elaine Ouellette. I am the Northeast School Nurse Regional Liaison for the Maine Department of Education. Today, you will learn some advanced skills to help improve your abdominal assessment skills. I will review different signs and you will view short video demonstrations on YouTube so you can see a demonstration of the skills discussed. For some of you, this information will be a review, and for others, there may be new skills to learn. In the school health office, you may want to do the abdominal assessment over clothing. If the student is wearing a t-shirt or a thin layer, you should be able to palpate pretty easily over a thin layer of clothing. And this may make the student feel more comfortable. Today, we will cover more abdominal pathology, and we're going to learn how to assess for peritonitis, appendicitis, and cholecystitis. If you have not viewed part one of abdominal assessment for school nurses, I encourage you to review that presentation first. It covers gathering subjective information and discusses inspection teaches you auscultation, palpation, and percussion skills. This diagram is a review of the regions that you will find the different organs located in. So when you're describing your assessment, you can be very specific about the regions that you're concerned about, if you know the correct terminology. You need to remember that the abdomen is very generalized in terms of pain and where the pain is referred to. For example, gallbladder pathology and problems in the pancreatic area may have referred pain to the back. So problems may not always be located in the region where the pain is located. Examination of different parts of the abdomen may indicate separate disease processes. So things are most likely to be located in certain areas. Referred pain is often from visceral nerve irritation and is not seen in youth too often in the right upper quadrant area and left upper quadrant area. You rarely see problems in those two areas in children. A mass in the left lower abdomen or left iliac region, if present, could be due to a tumor of the colon, a left ovarian cyst, or even possibly an ectopic pregnancy. Something to keep in the back of your mind when you're assessing an abdomen, especially in teenage girls. Left lower quadrant tenderness may be a presenting sign of feces in the descending colon in youth and is usually caused by constipation. Pain in the left hypochondriac area or the location of the spleen, especially in students who have just had a severe case of mono, is something to think about. Left lower quadrant tenderness may be a presenting sign of feces in the descending colon. And in younger kids, it's probably caused by constipation. If you palpate a mass in the left iliac area, that could be due to impacted feces in students who have encoparesis. Right lower quadrant pain or pain in the right iliac area is a sign that you need to evaluate for appendicitis. To evaluate for appendicitis, you first start with gentle palpation and you do the whole abdomen and leave the right upper, the right lower quadrant for last. You want to assess for tenderness and muscle rigidity. If you remember, muscle rigidity is that involuntary stiffness of the abdominal wall muscle and usually will indicate peritonitis. 
You also want to assess for muscle guarding as you palpate because guarding indicates some type of inflammation or it could also indicate peritonitis. The appendix lies at McBurney's point. To find McBurney's point, you first locate the umbilicus and draw an imaginary straight line to the anterior superior iliac spine. And that's the front part of the anterior hip bone that sticks out. From the umbilicus, you wanna stop about two thirds of the way down that line. And this is McBurney's point where the uh, appendix is anticipated to be located. To do the assessment, you want to place your hand at a 90 degree angle and press down gently. The expectation is that the pain is, does not increase when you press. If you have tenderness when you press, that's a positive McBurney sign. With appendicitis, usually the pain is rebound tenderness when you let go. And the reason the pain with appendicitis is worse when letting go is because that inflamed organ is now expanding. As you've compressed it, it expands and it causes pain. So if tenderness is appreciated at McBurney's point, there's a few other tests that need to be done to identify possible appendicitis. A lot of these tests indicate local peritonitis, which could be due to appendicitis. So as I discussed a couple of minutes ago, sometimes you have rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness, also known as Blumberg's sign, refers to the presence of pain when pressure is released during palpation rather than when pressure is applied. You want to apply firm pressure for several seconds in the abdomen and quickly release the pressure. A positive sign is pain when you release. So rebound tenderness, pain is worse when you release the pressure. When you have rebound tenderness over McBurney's point, as I said earlier, that is a sign of possible appendicitis. If rebound tenderness is present in a different part of the abdomen, it suggests peritoneal inflammation, irritation, or even peritonitis. Ross Vig's sign is tenderness in the right lower quadrant when you're palpating the left lower quadrant. It's referred rebound tenderness. So to perform the test, you're gonna stand on the person's right side and you gradually perform deep palpation of the left lower quadrant. If the student has increased pain on the opposite side or on the right, it suggests right-sided peritoneal inflammation which is another sign of appendicitis. So Ross, Ross Vick's sign, you palpate on the left side and that causes pain on the right side. The next sign is the psoas sign. And there are two different ways to perform the psoas sign. If you look at the first picture, You'll place your hand just above the student's right knee and ask them to push up against your hand. This results in contraction of the psoas muscle. When the psoas muscle contracts, it causes pain if there's any underlying inflammation, especially in the appendix area. The second picture shows another technique to detect the psoas sign. So the student is lying on their left side with their knees extended or their legs straight out. Your left hand is on the hip and the right hand is holding the student's top leg. You're going to bring the leg toward you, hyperextending that hip joint. The hand on the hip makes sure that your hip joint, re joint remains stationary or it doesn't move. 
the pain, if you have pain when doing this sign, the pain is because the psoas muscle is stretching and it causes friction against the nearby inflamed tissues. And if the appendix is inflamed, it'll cause pain in that right lower quadrant. If you look at the picture that has the green background, you'll see that the location of the psoas muscle on the right side passes directly over McBurney's point. The next one is the obturator sign. This technique is performed with the student in the supine position with the right leg flexed at the hip and at the knee. You have one hand on the ankle and the other hand at the knee. You want to rotate the thigh internally by moving the ankle away from the body or toward you. This procedure causes the internal obturator muscle to stretch, which produces an indirect pressure over the area where the appendix is located. Increased pain in the right lower quadrant suggests an inflamed appendix, or it could be due to some type of an abscess. The next test is called the Markle test, also known as the heel jar test. And it can be done in several different ways. One way is to have the students stand on their toes and suddenly drop down to their heels. A positive test will elicit pain in the right lower quadrant when the heels touch the floor. Some nurses like to do this test by having the student jump. Jumping will have the same effect as getting on their toes and dropping to their heels. If you already have the person in the supine position, there are a couple of different ways to do this test when they're laying down. One is to dorsiflex the toes quickly toward the head and release. So you have the patient squish their toes and release, squish and release. That'll cause some jarring motion and the jarring motion will often cause pain. Another way to do the test is to take the heel of your hand and tap on the person's heel. That jarring motion will have the same effect as the other methods. A positive test indicates peritonitis, but is not specific for appendicitis. The Markle test or the heel jar test should be performed as an adjunct test when doing your abdominal assessment if you suspect appendicitis. There is no perfect test for appendicitis. If you suspect it, you need to refer. Appendicitis is the most common acute surgical condition in youth and affects about 70,000 children in the U.S. annually. The peak incidence of appendicitis in children is between the ages of 10 and 19, and it affects boys more than girls in this age group. It's important to recognize the main symptoms so you can identify this quickly and easily. Usually symptoms of appendicitis will start with malaise and anorexia and progress to abdominal pain, which usually starts in the center of the abdomen around the navel area. The pain usually will localize over 12 to 24 hours to the right lower quadrant. You may see a low-grade fever with nausea or vomiting, and the pain gets worse with coughing or walking. There may be abdominal distension with difficulty passing gas. I've seen students, one student in particular, walk into my office bent over slightly forward, holding the right lower quadrant. This is a sure indicator that you need to assess for possible appendicitis. 
you won't see it often in your school health office, but when you suspect it, that student needs a medical evaluation for early detection to prevent perforation. I'd like to show you a YouTube video that shows, demonstrates the tests that we've just learned about. So the first part of what we're gonna do is the um, evaluation for guarding and rebound tenderness. So guarding is going to be contraction of the abdominal muscles um, against pain. It can be voluntary, uh, which can occur if your hand happens to be cold or the patient is ticklish, you'll feel the muscles contract. However, if there's significant peritoneal inflammation, then this guarding will be involuntary. When I go to press down on the abdomen, I will feel the firmness of the abdominal muscles and the patient won't be able to relax them. The way to be able to tell that this is um, that this palpation leading to guarding is actually involuntary is to do some relaxing maneuvers. So first, lift your hand there for a while so the patient gets used to the temperature. And you can also have the patient bend his legs. So you could bend your knees up for me. Both of them. Both of them, please. And that will, again, relax the abdominal muscles. If I press down and still feel the hardness of the muscle contraction, now we're looking at involuntary guarding. If you could relax your legs for me. The next we're gonna look at is rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness is pain with release of the pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press down on your abdomen and you let me know if it hurts more when I'm pushing in or when I'm pushing out or when I'm letting go, excuse me. So I push in and let go quickly. Where was there more pain? In. In, okay. So that would be tenderness, but negative for rebound tenderness. So the next maneuvers I'm gonna talk about are some more disease specific maneuvers. Rebound tenderness and guarding is general peritoneal inflammation. It can be as a result of anything that leads to peritoneal irritation all the way to a frank peritonitis. We have some special maneuvers specific to, we'll start with appendicitis. So the first one is gonna be Rosfing sign, which is a referred rebound tenderness, and it's specific for appendicitis. So the appendix is generally in the right lower quadrant, if I do rebound tenderness by pushing down in the left lower quadrant, and I get rebound tenderness in the right associated with that, that is Rothsping sign. So again, I just push in and let go sharply and ask the patient where they felt more discomfort and where the discomfort was. A positive sign would be pain associated with rebound, but overly in the right as opposed to where I was palping. Next one is gonna be McBurney's point. So that is again, specific point tenderness at the area of most commonly felt for the appendix. McBurney's point is found by finding the anterior iliac spine um, and the abdomen, excuse me, and the umbilicus and drawing an imaginary line between the two. Approximately two inches from the iliac spine or approximately a third of the way to the umbilicus on that imaginary line is McBurney's point. And I wanna press down in that location and see if I elicit any pain or tenderness at that location. So these next two maneuvers are also for appendicitis. The first one is psoas sign. What I'm gonna do is have the patient activate their psoas muscle, which will cause it to push up against the um, inflamed appendix and cause pain up in the abdomen. So in order to do that, I'm gonna put pressure on the patient's thigh, on the right leg, just above his knee, and ask him to try and lift his leg off the table, so flex your hip and while I push down, and then relax. So that there was a negative psoas sign because it didn't elicit any pain. If it elicited pain, that would have been a positive psoas sign. The next one is obturator sign. What we're gonna do is stretch that obturator muscle, and again, it'll rub up against the inflamed appendix. A positive sign would be eliciting pain. So this one, I'm gonna do the motions. So I'm gonna lift the patient's leg and do an external, excuse me, an internal rotation of the patient's hip. So I'm gonna turn the lower leg outwards for an internal rotation. If that was a negative sign because he had no pain. Positive would have been pain in the area of the right lower quadrant. So the first part of what we're gonna do So that video was a really good review for the things that we learned today. Muscle guarding, rebound tenderness, which is pain when you release rather than push down, 
Rothsing sign, which you press on the left, and it has referred pain to the right side. McBurney's test, which is pain at McBurney's point or the location of the appendix. The psoas sign, which is the hand on the right knee and the person pushes up against your hand. Pain in the right lower quadrant is a positive psoas sign. The obturator test, person flexes their right knee and you rotate the leg, the thigh internally. Pain in the right lower quadrant is a positive test. And the heel jar test or Markle's test, which the video didn't show, but that was an easy one. You just go up on your toes and drop down to your heels and that will elicit pain in the right lower quadrant. Those were all signs for possible appendicitis. Murphy's sign, the next technique we're going to discuss is seen in acute cholecystitis. This one is done with the person in the supine position and you're palpating the right upper quadrant. You want to push down in the right lower quadrant, but push directly under the ribs. While you're pushing down, you have the student take a deep breath. If taking a deep breath causes sharp pain and they stop their inhalation, that's a positive Murphy sign and can be seen with acute cholecystitis. So you're pushing down, you're palpating, you're pushing under the ribs. As you're pushing, you have them take a deep breath and they stop midway inhalation because they have sharp pain, a positive Murphy's test. This happens because as the student takes a deep breath, the abdominal contents are pushed down as the diaphragm contracts. So the gallbladder gets pushed down, it descends towards your hand. So if that gallbladder is inflamed, there's significant pain as it gets pushed down and, and comes into contact with the examiner's hand as they're pushing in. That is a positive Murphy sign with pain that is so bad that it stops the inhalation. There are many potential causes of abdominal pain in school-aged youth that can range from stress, constipation, irritable bowels, to stomach ulcers, gastroenteritis, or cystitis. Today we've covered assessment skills for three acute conditions, peritonitis, appendicitis, and cholecystitis. It's not important that you remember the names of all the tests but it is important that you can describe the test and the student's reaction to it when you document your assessment. So your nurse's notes could state something like this. The student has right lower quadrant pain with rebound tenderness. There is right lower quadrant pain when the student pushes up against my hand that is on their thigh. Internal rotation of their flexed right leg also causes right lower quadrant pain, as does dropping to their heels or jumping. So those are all ways to describe the abdominal assessment and the results that you're seeing. Other things that you would want to assess and document are vital signs, especially the temperature. You want the history. When did the pain start and how it's progressed and how the student is feeling at that point. You're going to see many students with abdominal pain in the school health office. Hopefully the abdominal assessment trainings that you have seen today will help you correlate the information with your history and physical findings with the relevant anatomy and hopefully you have learned special techniques for evaluating the abdomen to check for different abdominal pain, areas of pain. Remember after you've done your assessment to document your findings and give the parent a copy of your assessment to share with the medical provider when you refer that student. Your detailed assessment and that information 
will help that medical provider diagnose the problem. You wanna make sure you practice your abdominal assessment skills. The more you practice, the more proficient you will become. Thank you for your time and thank you for all you do for the students in your school. You truly make a difference. I will end with a quote that was shared with me by a school nurse recently. It takes a whole village to raise a child. You are part of that village. Thank you. And thank you for all you do for the students in your school and in your care.